Before setting the engine on the saw head, set the clamps on the track to keep the carriage from rolling. I found it easier to work on with the carriage clamp all the way to the end of the track. If you have the oil drain kit, go ahead and install it now. Setting the engine on blocks makes it a little easier. Oops, looks like Briggs and Stratton put a little oil in the crankcase. Okay, now to drain the oil for an oil change, all you have to do is attach the hose and open the valve. Bolt the engine down just finger tight. Clamp the track template to the blade shield mounting flanges to position the engine before tightening down the bolts. And then bring the motor up flush to it. There. Leave the rear bolt on the operator side finger tight since you'll be attaching the ground wire from the battery to it later. It would have helped to remove the oil filter to get this one tightened down. The throttle cable is a tight fit. It helps to jam the throttle open and work with the cables in place with a pair of needle nosed pliers. Pull the cable until it just moves the throttle linkage and tighten down the clamp. You should be able to open and close the throttle by pulling on the cable. Exhaust. Remove the plastic cover. Wrap the heat shield around the muffler. And bolt it on. Remove the two mounting bolts from the engine. Apply anti-seize compound to all the exhaust bolts. You might want to remove them someday. So oh, this magnetic part tray is a great idea. Make sure the manifold gaskets are oriented properly. If they're backwards, they'll partially block the exhaust and the engine won't develop full power. Just finger tight for now. Here's a torque chart for the exhaust bolts. This is a fairly inexpensive torque wrench. It has digital readout and beeps with preset torque. I've got it set to 15 foot-pounds for the manifold bolts. The 
Okay, 15 there. The mounting bolts torque down to about 12 and a half foot pounds. That you just about get it. Put the battery on a charger so it'll be ready when you need it. Norwood ships an absorbed glass mat type battery, so use that setting if your charger has it. Measure the battery box mounting holes in the saw head platform and drill 8 inch holes in the battery holder to match. Just to be clear, drill the holes in the battery box, not in the battery. Then drive in the self-tapping screws to secure it. Note that the screws are in the recessed parts of the battery box, so the screw heads won't be in contact with the battery. Set the battery in place with the positive terminal toward the front of the mill. The winch control lets you set the direction and speed of the lift winch. Tighten down the mounting bolts evenly, just snug enough to hold it in place. The control output cable can only go in one way. Just line up the tabs. Attach the output control wires to the controller and the winch motor. Red to red, black to black. Only consequence of getting it backwards would be uh, the up and down would be reversed. Easy to, easy to switch. There we go. Attach the battery cable to the winch controller and thread it through the upright support to the battery. I'm using zip ties to keep the wires together. There. That makes a pretty neat little package. When wiring up the battery, the very last connection is the ground or the black cable. That way, if you accidentally brush the positive wire against the frame, it won't throw a spark. Bolt the red battery cable to the stud on the solenoid. and the black battery cable to the mounting bolt on the engine block that you didn't tighten down before. Now you can tighten down that bolt. Next, attach the other end of the red battery cable and the red end of the motor controller to the positive end of the battery terminal. Then, snug down the connection to the solenoid. Finally, attach the other end of the black battery cable and the black cable to the motor controller to the negative battery terminal. With all the battery cables tightened down, you can set the top of the battery box in place. Just make sure the cables run through the openings in the top. And it's a good idea to go ahead and strap down the top of the battery box so it stays put. There we go. That way we won't leave it on the road somewhere. Uh, you've got your switch here with the tortoise for slow and the rabbit for fast. And another switch for up and down. It's even labeled just in case you can't figure it out. So, go there and let's see if it'll go up. Oh, I love it. There it goes. Smooth. Down was a little quicker because of the weight. And that's where your control might come in. So 
so you get it down exactly where you want it. And I'm just going to pull a tension, little tension in the cables, turn it off, and uh, that's not a bad place to call it a day. Two latches attached to the small rear guard. And three latches attached to the large one. So you're going to mount the shield on these three bolts on the bracket. And instructions are pretty clear. But the bolts need to go from the inside out. So they have to go that way. And we're using the nylon insert nuts. Check the holes for alignment. You may need to remove a little plastic to line them up. And I'm going to have to cut this out so the shaft will clear it. <laughs> a step drill is a pretty good way to enlarge the hole because those shoulders can bite down on the edge and enlarge them. And that works well, especially with plastic. Use fender washers under all the bolt heads and nuts that are in contact with the plastic. Just finger tight for now so you can adjust them. Here's where we really need those fender washers because we had to enlarge those holes a bit. Line up the tops of the shields as close as you can. And when everything's lined up, tighten them down. Idler and clutch. Check to make sure that the bolt threads easily onto the idler pulley bracket. This is a half inch in C, and there's so much powder coating in there that bolt will not go in. There we go. Be sure to get that spacer washer between the pulley and the adjuster plate when you assemble the idler. Tighten the nut until it just touches the pulley so that the pulley can slide up and down. Then pull it onto the frame. It helps to put a dab of grease on the engine crankshaft so the centrifugal clutch will slide on easily. Instructions call for a backing collar on the motor shaft. So I'm going to slip it on just a little. Slide on the centrifugal clutch just a little ways more. Then I'll drop in the washer. And I'm going to push that washer until it bottoms out against the motor shaft. Then very carefully pull off the clutch and without sliding that collar, I'm going to tighten it down. 
insert the key, line up the keyway with the key on the engine shaft, and just slide it in place. And a washer. And I like to put a lock washer in there just to keep everything in place. Get the thread started. Best way to tighten it down is with an impact driver. There you go. All right, now we're ready to take this shoulder bolt back out, spread grease on the operator's side axle, and slide it in with the notch to the inside and the hole oriented vertically. It should just slide right in. Pin the axle in place with the shoulder bolt. Then repeat the process on the non-operator side of the mill. Both axles should pivot freely. The operator side band wheel slips right onto the axle with the Norwood sawmill lettering facing towards you. Slip on the big brass washer and lock down that collar good and tight. Now for the most challenging part of assembling the sawmill, putting the belt on the band wheel. Spraying a little soapy water on the band wheel and belt makes it easier. All right, so it's held all the way around. Just gonna slip it on this little bit here, and that is the hard part. That worked. I hope that video worked out because I really don't wanna do that again. The engine drives the non-operator side of the band wheel. Set the bolts through the band wheel. Lay it flat. Then set the collar and drive pulley in place over the bolts. and tighten them down. Band wheel slips onto the axle with the drive pulley to the inside. Just snug down the grease circuits. Easy to strip the threads. Finally, give both band wheels a shot of grease. And spin them to make sure they turn freely. Slip the belt behind the drive pulley. Then thread it behind the metal guard around the centrifugal clutch and over the idler pulley. Start the belt on the bottom of the band wheel pulley and turn the band wheel counterclockwise to roll it in place. Make sure that there are no twists in the belt and give it a spin. 
adjust the idler pulley just enough that you can easily move the bell up and down about an inch. Rubbing right here, like it's a little bent in. I don't like it when things rub. That's better. Control cables. Open up the hook end of the spring on the water valve cable just a little so you can hook it onto the valve. Route the water valve cable down through one of the keeper holes in the push handle and attach it to the top post of the control handle. Adjust the nuts so that the threaded part is about halfway through the bracket. Attach the spring to the water control valve and fasten the end of the cable to the housing. Adjust the cable so that the edge of the valve just touches the housing and is full open when the throttle control is pushed all the way forward. Run the throttle cable down through the cable keeper on the push handle and attach it to the middle post on the control handle. Tighten the adjusting nuts to about the midpoint on the threads. And tighten them down. On this mill, the edge of the throttle lever was rubbing against the bracket, so I put in three washers and used the longer bolt to give it a little clearance. That just centers it a little better. Has much better feel to it. Lumber scale assembly. And we'll get a little grease on the threads of those adjusting handles. Well, the fixed scale slips in place. A flat washer between the handle and the scale distributes the pressure. The Velcro keeps the sliding scale from rattling against the bracket. The top of the sliding scale slips in the slot behind the bracket. The second handle lets it slide independently while the fixed scale remains in place. I chose to put a standard bolt in place of the fixed scale handle since it stays in place once the scale is calibrated. That's just my preference. Peel the plastic film off the scale indicator and bolt the indicator onto the scale bracket. The board foot chart makes a handy reference. The anchoring hooks to the front guards. They'll line up with the latches on the rear guards to hold them in place. The guard plates protect the front guards if the blade comes off the band wheel. They bolt to the inside of each blade guard. I added a washer behind each bolt. The safety limit switches won't let the engine run if the shields are not in place. The arm is straight out. The switch shorts out the ignition system and the engine can't run. Putting the shield on the mill moves the arm, the switch clicks open, and the engine can run. A little thread lock and mount the top switch to sense the non-operator shield.
when you attach the shield, you should just hear a click. It might take some adjusting. The lower switch senses the presence of the shield on the operator's side. Both switch arms have to be pressed for the engine to run. Two shield safety switches wired in parallel between the ignition post and the ground to the engine block. The easiest way to connect the safety switches and emergency shutoff to the ignition post is to add another nut on top of the one already there, which is a low oil sensor. A number 10 SAE nut and flat washer work perfectly. The wires ground out on the engine block. You'll need a longer bolt. Six millimeter diameter by 14 millimeters long will do, and a flat washer between the wires and the block. Now you're ready to install the blade on the mill. Back off the tension handle by turning it counterclockwise, then push it in to move the band wheel as far forward as possible. Wear gloves when handling the blade. It should slip right onto the band wheels. Tighten the blade by turning the tensioning key handle clockwise until you feel just a little pressure. Adjust the blade on both band wheels so the teeth and about an eighth of an inch of the gullets are showing. So we're tightening down until this washer is just flush with the end cap, which it is. So now we're ready to set our tracking. What the tracking does is to set the angle of the band wheel so the blade rides on it in the proper place. And ideally, this band wheel should be perfectly in line with and parallel to this one. So, so they'll need to be adjusted. Best way is to get yourself a straight edge and run it across there. And you can see we've got a gap right in here. So that means that this band wheel needs to come out just a little bit, and we'll do that with our tracking. That's better. Still need to come in, still need to come around a little bit more. Okay, so this band wheel also needs to track out a little bit, so we'll adjust that tracking bolt next.
Okay, now this one's looking pretty flat. This one is still pretty close, but we moved this in. So now this one's got to come out, and it's going to be just a matter of working them back and forth until we get what we need. There we go. We rotate the band wheel. Watch the blade on both band wheels. If the blade starts to move outward on the band wheel, tighten the tracking bolt on that side about a half turn. If the blade starts to move inward, then loosen it a half turn. When the blade stays in the proper place after a dozen rotations, the tracking is set. You can't get any better than that. Then loosen the blade, retighten it, give it another spin, and check the tracking again. Blade horizontal adjustment. Double check that the spacer cones on both sides are in place and the set screws are tightened down. Next, level the saw head by raising it about halfway up, then measure the height to the top end cap on each side. We're at uh, 20 and a 32nd. On... We're at uh, 20 on the operator's side. I know that the threads are 16 threads per inch, but we also have a 4 to 1 advantage on the pulleys, so every revolution is a 64th of an inch which means we need two full revolutions up to get it leveled. One, two. Double check your measurements. 20 inches on both sides. Perfect. And I like to put a jam nut on that just to hold it in place. There. Now that nut will stay put, and of course we'll put a jam nut on the other side as well. Blade guide adjustment. Well, before you start setting up your blade guides, you might as well get your tools lined out. And we've got a 9 16 inch socket wrench, a 5 16 3 8 7 16 half inch, and 9 16 inch combination wrenches a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench for the ceramic guide adjustment, and a level. I've found it's easier to put that bearing guide on after the blade is set up. Then you can just slide it right in place, drop in our attaching bolts, going to leave these finger tight because it does need to slide up and down but we don't want too much play. <clears throat> On the non-operator side mounting bolts go in the bracket and I like to put a washer behind them and the block just goes in place. Bolts go in just finger tight. To set up the blade guides, the rollers should be about 24 inches apart and the blade should be at full tension and tracking properly on the band wheels. Then make sure the sawmill frame is level from front to back. I glued a magnet onto this bubble level and it makes a real good way to check the blade and the track for level. Then we'll pull out our lateral adjustment just to where that collar is a sixteenth of an inch behind the back of the blade. So I pull it all the way out till it touches the blade and then push it back about a sixteenth and we'll tighten her down there. I 
Under normal operation, that collar will not touch the back of the blade. It's just there for a little extra protection in case that blade gets pushed back a little bit. It'll uh, keep it in place. Vertical adjusting bolt comes in from the top, just until it touches the top of that trunnion block. So manual calls for 3 16 inch down pressure on the blade. At 16 threads per inch, three turns should just about get it. So we'll go one, two, three. Now we can tighten down our mounting bolts. Now we'll level the blade to the track. And we know the track is level. We've already checked that. I put that bubble level right on the blade. It'll stay put. And it's pretty close, but the blade needs to tip down just a little bit in order to center that bubble. So I'm going to loosen up this back bolt, tighten down the front one. That should bring that bubble back to level. And that looks like what we want right there. So all we have to do at this point is retighten the back bolt. Okay, bubble came off the of center just a bit, so we'll loosen the back bolt and tighten the front bolt a little bit more and just keeping them back and forth until we're tight and that bubble is right in the center of the level. So there's everything we need to do with the top part of the roller guide. What's left now is the bottom part. The fourth adjustment is the ceramic guide. Adjust the ceramic guide out so that the edge of the disc is just under the gullet of the blade. About there. And that's where we'll tighten it down. To get the right gap in there, you can just take a business card, fold it in half, slip it in between the guide and the blade. Loosen that guide and just hold it up while you tighten it down. Pull that out. Now you've got just about right. It won't scrape the blade while you're cutting, but if it tries to take a dive in a cut, that ceramic guide will catch it and hold it level. And that sounds good to me. The calibration on the non-operator side is pretty much the same. Set the collar a sixteenth inch behind the blade. Set three sixteenths inch down pressure on the blade. Level the blade. Set the ceramic guide position and gap. And I have exactly four and three eighths of an inch measured on this side. And I'm a little bit shy of four and three eighths of an inch. This side needs to come up just maybe a 32nd of an inch. I have not tightened these, these bolts yet, so it can still slide. So we need a little more gap here, so I'm going to back this, this bolt off. Let it come up that much. Recheck our measurements. Four and three eighths. Four and three eighths. That's it. Now we can tighten down our vertical mounting bolts. And give the band wheel a few spins to make sure that everything rolls freely. Then check the roller guides one final time. Slide the rubber grommet about 30 inches onto the water hose.
feed the water line through the valve. Feed it through. And press it on the main valve. So now when you squeeze the throttle lever, for full throttle when you're milling, that opens the valve, lets water flow through the hose. And when you release the throttle, that pinches the hose off, stops the flow of coolant so you don't waste it when you're not milling. Now you can bolt on the water valve cover. The other end of the water hose goes through the hole in the saw head panel. The rubber grommet holds it in place. So now we're ready to install the water nozzle. So you can thread it in by hand. And do the last little bit with a wrench just to snug it down. You don't want to strip out the threads. And now you can just bend it around to drip water on the blade any way you need it. Attach the inlet nozzle on the back of the movable guide. Again, just snug down. And now we just bring in our water hose. There. To calibrate the blade height scale, we're going to measure from the cross bunk up to the bottom of the lowest tooth. That's the tooth that's bent down. And it looks like this one works. So we'll, to my eye, that looks exactly like six and a quarter inches. So I'm going to slide the scale to exactly six and a quarter inches right here. And tighten her down. Five inches on the scale and five inches on the blade height. And you just can't get any closer than that. All right, now we're ready to mount the sliding blade guard. And we'll start by threading on this knurled handle. And that guard just slides right in place. There's no way you can bump this part of the blade either while it's spinning or stationary. And it slides in and out with your movable guide. I cut a slit in a tennis ball that fits right on the end of that just so I don't bump into it. And now, that's just that much better. Now put the front shields back on. Now we can lock the mill in place so it doesn't slide on the track. And mount the tire. And of course, we'll put our fenders in place. about ready to rock and roll. A tachometer and hour meter isn't a bad idea. It tells you how your engine is performing and lets you know when it's time for scheduled maintenance. This one costs less than 15 bucks. The engine manual calls for a quart and a half of oil, but check the level after the first quart since there is already some oil in the engine. It's near the top of the mark on the dipstick, so we'll move on. Okay, switch off. Of course, the tank is empty. And then we'll pull through a few times. Eighty nine octane, ethanol free. Only the best fuel for this sawmill. Hmm. For some reason, the gas doesn't want to go in the tank.
Well, the, well, the screen was the problem. If you had to pull out the screen to fuel up the engine, what's the point? I don't want to fill it. Fuel gauge. That's plenty to try it out. Okay, choke. There's a fuel shut off. Ah. ah, the emergency stop was pushed in. Let's give it another go. Ah, listen to that. There's a nice smooth idle. And the centrifugal clutch is doing its job because the blade is not spinning. And we'll bring the throttle up real slowly. Here we are at 2300. And the blade is just starting to spin. Ease the throttle up. Blade has stopped. Again, nice, consistent idle. So we're about ready to start making a little sawdust. Well, there it is. He's ready to go, and I can't wait to start cutting lumber with it. So it wasn't too bad. It just took a little bit of time, that's all. And uh, if you're putting one together, have any comments or questions, uh, post it below this video, and I'll get back to you if I can. Oh, yeah. The hat. I was going to save this one for a special occasion, and I think getting this mill put together qualifies. So I'll be making more videos on down the line with some of my experiences and adventures with this mill. Hope you'll join me. And until then, be safe and keep making sawdust. <laughs>